Hey guys, I'm Mikey back here for the video guys. Welcome back to another episode of my NFL News Flash series. Guys, I do this each and every single Saturday. So if you enjoy the series, make sure to like and subscribe button and let's talk some NFL news. So starting off right away, guys, the David uh the Chiefs signed David Amberson to a one year six million dollar contract with a lot of incentives. Now, I don't have all the incentives here, but you can look up the contract for yourself. It's a one-year, $6 million. So, pretty nice contract. I mean, for one year, usually you don't see that kind of money. I mean, usually a one-year deal is kind of like a prove-it deal, and it's usually not that much, but he was a Raider, and now he is a Chief. Next one we have here is going to be, will Le'Veon Bell stay with the Steelers? Should the Steelers give him a lot of money? Should they not? Should they franchise tag him? Well, the biggest thing about this, guys, is that I believe Le'Veon should stay with the Steelers. And the reason why is because, yes, chasing money is always fun to do, but he's in a great system that works for him. Okay, he's getting the ball more times than God. So he's going to be able to you know consistently have that... Uh, carry share that no other halfback in the league has pretty much he can they will give him the ball 75 times in a row many halfbacks in the league you know we have like three or four halfbacks who all split carries a lot of time shares Le'Veon doesn't get that second thing he got a success with the Steelers and I'm kind of like a sucker for that kind of crap if I believe you get your success with a team you know who pretty much you were nothing and now you're something Stay with that team, you know, consistently be with that team and end your career with that team. But, of course, this is him, and if he wants to chase money, he can chase money, but he will get paid big time if he leaves, and he will get a big contract. But we'll have to wait and see if the Steelers franchise tag him, sign him to an actual deal, or what ends up happening. But I'm definitely thinking Pittsburgh wants a seven-year deal with him. They don't want to have this issue every three years or five years. They want a, you know, long-term deal that they can work out together and it can be a long-term contract. Now, will that happen? We'll have to wait and see. Let's go on from there. So, possible franchise tag players. We have Le'Veon Bell, as we just mentioned, Demarcus Ware, Allen Robinson, Sammy Watkins, Kyle Fuller, Andrew Norwell, Ezekiel Onsla, and Sheldon Richardson. Those are possible players that could get franchise tagged. Now, tell me down below, guys, in the comment section, which of those players, if, you, if they're on your team... Do you want them to be franchise tagged or not? Again, we just talked about Le'Veon Bell, DeMarcus Ware being with the Cowboys. I don't know. I mean, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Ware, DeMarcus Lawrence being with the Cowboys. DeMarcus Lawrence had a phenomenal season. So if he does get franchise tagged, I mean, that's definitely, I don't know. I feel like if they do franchise tag him, it would just be so that they can go ahead and see if he's, you know, had the same, he replicates the same year next year. But We'll have to wait and see on that one. Allen Robinson, of course, you know, in Jacksonville. Blake Bortles actually ends up being a good quarterback. Who knew? Um, and now we have to wait and see, you know, can he get healthy and stuff like that. He's going to win a lot of money, so we have to wait and see on that one. Sammy Watkins is kind of interesting. He got traded to uh, St. Oh, not St. Louis, L.A. now. He got traded to L.A. I don't know if I would franchise tag him, to be honest. Um, he didn't have too great of a season. He had a decent season. But I don't think I would franchise tag him if I was, you know, the LA's coach, LAGM. But we'll have to wait and see what they end up doing. Biggest possible free agents. We have Jimmy Graham, Javaris Landry, and Case Keenum. Let's talk about Case Keenum. So he is going to be a free agent. Minnesota has uh, throws the belt, Teddy Bridgewater. Sammy Biscuits, Sam Bradford. And Case Keenum. Three quarterbacks. One possible franchise quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. We have to wait and see how his health ends up being. Uh, Sam Bradford is an amazing backup. If not starter. Which he was a starter. And then we have Case Keenum who took them to an NFC playoff game. Playoff game. My brain is completely fluffier. Championship. Not play. Well, playoff game. He, you know orchestrated the Minnesota Miracle and uh, throwing Stephon Diggs for a 60-yard, I believe it was a 60-yard touchdown. Obviously, poor tackling job, you could say. But very, very nice play nonetheless. And yeah, so 
Jimmy Graham possibilities. I've heard rumors of him coming to Baltimore. I've heard rumors of him going to Houston. I've heard rumors of him going to Pittsburgh. There's a lot of places Jimmy Graham and a lot of teams are interested in Jimmy. So wherever he ends up falling, I know Seattle needs some cap room to cut. So I don't think they're going to sign him back. I'm going to go with Houston. If he has to choose between Houston and Baltimore, he's probably going to go with a better quarterback in Deshaun Watson. If not, um, and he goes somewhere else, again, a tight end, six foot seven, his caliber, his record, his, you know, how good he is. He's going to catch a lot of attention. So there's probably going to be a lot of teams interested. And with that in mind, I'm going to be interested to see where he ends up. Javaris Landry's number two. I already talked about this before. Uh, Eric Weddle and Tony Jefferson are actually trying to recruit him to Baltimore. They're trying to bring him to the Ravens. Uh, if he comes to the Ravens, that would be a great, you know, as a Ravens fan, I would love that. Um, now we have to wait and see, you know, how he ends up doing with Joe Flacco, but you know, Joe dislikes anyone he could throw the ball to six million times and Landry is kind of that guy. Next one we have here is going to be Case Keenum. Now there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. 49ers no longer are a team, but there's a lot of teams. Cleveland obviously will be talking to, you know, Case Keenum to have him on the phone be like, Hey, you know, you want to come here or not? They'll have, uh, they'll have, you know, conversation with him. A lot of teams might want him as a backup, though. So I wouldn't be surprised if, yes, a lot of teams will give try to give him starter money. But we might see a team like maybe New England who just offers him a crap deal and says, hey, you have a chance of winning Super Bowl if you come here and kind of do that kind of stuff. Maybe he'll go to Philadelphia. Maybe Philadelphia, if they do get rid of Nick Foles, maybe they'll decide Kane's Keenum to low amount of money. Again, wherever he goes, I kind of feel like he won't be a backup. I feel like he'll get a big contract. He'll get, you know, just a spack smack money. So we'll have to wait and see. But if he wants a chance to get a ring or he wants to be a starter, we have to wait and see what he wants. Because some, t- some players just want a ring. They just want to win. And Keenum has not won yet. He almost won this year with the Minnesota Vikings. But the Eagle of Philadelphia Eagles beat them. So, he, I mean, he I don't know what kind, of, what kind of player he is personally. I don't know if he chased money or if he chased fame. We'll have to wait and see. But if he just wants a ring, Philadelphia, New England, those are your best options on the table right now. Atlanta is a good option. Um, again, anywhere he goes, if he's going to chase a ring, probably going to be a backup quarterback. Now, Based on how Andrew Luck is, there's a possibility I would, if, you know, with the Colts having a new coach, maybe look at him and be like, hey, maybe we'll get you. Now, that does bring me into the next point, actually, though, that the Colts hired former OC um, Frank Reach. Rich, how do you say his name? They hired him. So, he was the OC when Case, well, he was the OC who they beat the uh, Vikings. But he saw, you know, some kind of co- coordination, come kind of connection with, you know, the um, Case Keenum miracle in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota miracle. He saw that, you know, firsthand. Obviously, he's probably watching the tape a million freaking times. But, you know, it would be interesting to see if he kind of is like, you know, this guy actually did something really good in that game. And in case Carson Wentz goes down again, just bring him in. You know, Philadelphia, again, that goes into the whole, can he do it? Like, you know, will he go ahead and go for the ring or for the money? But with that in mind, the Colts do, oh, sorry, not the not Philadelphia, sorry, the Colts do hire the coach. So not Philadelphia, but he would bring him to uh, Indianapolis to, I guess, take over for, for sets, which... Again, it all depends on Andrew Luck's health and if he's healthy or not. If he's healthy, this, you know, scratch this whole entire thing. The, the Colts aren't even going to look at, uh, you know, what's his name? Case Keenum. But if Andrew Luck is not healthy, maybe they'll bring him in there. Maybe they'll see if he can, you know, be a starter day one over Pussets. I know Pussets didn't have a great season last year. So maybe he could be, you know, Case Keenum comes in. He's a starter like he was for Minnesota. And until Andrew Luck gets healthy, he becomes a starter. I don't know. Again, there's so many ideas, so many possibilities of where Case Keenum could go. He could go for Cle- to Cleveland all, as as far as we know. You know, he could go to Cleveland. He could go. He could stay with Minnesota. Maybe Minnesota want to keep him. I don't. I don't see why. I mean, I'm I'm not saying Minnesota. He's not good for Minnesota. I'm saying I don't see why Minnesota would keep him with the money he's probably going to ask for. 
But um, you could stay with Minnesota. You could go to Philadelphia. You could go to New England. Uh, again, his caliber, he has proven that he is not only, you know, the best backup quarterback in the NFL behind Nick Foles. He is still, you know, a great quarterback. So there's always chances of him going anywhere else. So two players that cannot be franchise tagged no matter what. We have Drew Brees and Nate Solder. According to the contracts, they cannot be franchise tagged. So they're going to have to get some kind of contracts. And if they don't, they're going to be leaving. They can't be traded. So interesting to see what happens. Now, last but not least, I want to end this video off by talking about Johnny Manziel and his comeback to football. Johnny Manziel said he had depression issues. He had bipolar disorder. And he also, you know, obviously made a lot of mistakes in his life. Now, he is going to, I believe, a summer league, summer type of thing. And he's going to try to fix his life and possibly come back to football. Um, I know I heard a lot of reports of the Baltimore Ravens having interest in him. Or they were saying that they might go there. I don't think with how the Ravens are and how like their track record of players, you have an issue, we don't want you pretty much. That seems like how the Ravens are. If you have an issue in your past, we're just like, sorry, we're not going to work with you. Um, but again, he could go to countless other teams. There's so many teams that would probably just give him a chance. I mean, I'm not saying that they would sign him and, you know, have him like as day one starter. But they'd probably bring him in, try him out, see how he plays, see how he is, kind of get a grip of his attitude and everything like that. I'd love to see a player who did, you know, honestly messed up their life 100%, come back and try their best to fix it. Try their best to, you know, right their wrongs. And I got to say, it's an honorable, you know, thing on Manziel's part to do this. Now, I have to mention this because he did this before. I mean, this is not the first time Johnny Manziel has just, oh, hey guys, I messed up. Forgive me. He did this before. Um, first time with, with after he was with the Browns for a little bit, he one off season he went to reporters and said, "No longer am I going to do the money signs. These money signs." He said, "I'm no longer going to do them. I'm going to fo focus more on the team, pay attention less to me and about the organization, and try my best to do the best for Cleveland." Well, it wasn't like, what, three or four weeks later where he was back to his old annex, drinking, missing meetings, doing the whole nine yards, and he was back to the old Manziel. So, is this going to be a different time? Is this going to be a different, you know, person? I don't think, I don't know. I mean, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but if he does claim he has bipolar disorder, depression issues, Personally speaking, I, I I know from experience, not the bipolar, but the depression issues, that stuff that doesn't go away. And especially bipolar disorders, you can take your medicine, but that stuff doesn't go away really that much either. So, unless Manziel was really going to, you know, buckle down the chin straps and just give it his all, which he needs to do, I'm hoping we don't just see the same thing we saw last time with the money signs. I'm hoping that we, do, we don't just see Manziel come back just to mess up everything again. Hey, I love a comeback story. I love a play. I mean, my whole channel was built around, well, not built around, but whole channel, if you guys do not know, my game attack is Barry Strong because Barry Strong is when Eric Barry, one of my favorite players, he beat cancer. And I Barry Strong was his little thing he put. And because obviously Eric Barry and then Barry Strong keep fighting, keep being strong. And obviously Manziel is not coming from cancer, but he is still fighting back from a disease or sickness that he has. So I'm hoping Manziel can do it. I'm hoping Manziel can be a better person and actually, you know, change. Now, will he? Only time will tell. But I want my I want to try my best here to have the believe in him to at least try. Because it takes, you know, many, many people when they're going through this kind of crap, they don't even, they, they just deny it's a thing. They deny it's a problem. Manziel has admitted it's a problem and he is trying to get better. Now, again, we'll have to wait and see if that is a fully hearted apology, fully hearted issue, or if it's just, hey, I ran out of money, guys. I kind of need some more. So I apologize. Now, something to a contract. 
Oh, you signed me to a contract? I'm back, baby. No, I'm hoping that's not a thing. I'm hoping it's fully, you know, it's just like, hey, I messed up. I did. I messed up. I came back. I did it again, but I messed up again. But, you know, this time I'm actually going to fix it. So, again, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, guys, this series comes out every single Saturday. And I bring you guys, try to bring you guys the best updates of the week in football. See you guys next one. Peace out.